We begin with the Johnson family of West Bloomfield, Michigan. Victoria Johnson's pregnancy was picture perfect. There was no indication before little Summer was born that there was anything wrong. And when Summer entered the world in July of 2011, she looked and acted like any other newborn, except for one thing. It sounded like she had something caught in her throat. Uh, so every time she took a breath, it just sounded real chunky. And they said she aspirated when she was born. And they said that she'd disappear in 24 hours. And when it hadn't is when we became concerned. After three days with no improvement, the Johnsons decided to have Summer transferred from the hospital where she was born to the Children's Hospital of Michigan by Panda One, Michigan's only dedicated pediatric and neonatal ambulance service. Upon her arrival, doctors examined baby Summer's throat and airway using tiny scopes designed for children and discovered something they weren't expecting. That's when Dr. Michael Halpert, chief of the Department of Pediatric ENT, got involved. Dr. Halpert has been at the Children's Hospital of Michigan for 19 years and had never before seen Summer's combination of defects. The scope revealed a very rare abnormality. It's called a type 4 posterior laryngotracheoesophageal cleft. So basically, the partition that's between the esophagus and trachea wasn't formed. We should have two separate tubes, the trachea and the esophagus, and then my fingers would be like the wall or the partition between the two. In this case, that wall partition didn't develop, so it's one kind of generalized tube, so that when she would eat, it wouldn't go necessarily down the esophagus into the stomach, it could go into the lungs. And she could aspirate, she could get pneumonia, and it's, you know, has to be corrected. And then she also had this abnormality where she had this extra takeoff that went from the trachea into the upper lobe of the left lung. I've never seen it in an association with a cleft like she had. Summer's condition was very serious. In fact, her chances of survival were only 50%. After the scope, I mean, we knew we had to do something because she's just gonna aspirate and get pneumonia and die. So we discussed it with the pediatric surgeons to have them reconstruct the esophagus. And then myself and Dr. Soraya would reconstruct the airway portion of it. Dr. Harper, I believe that he and his team was gonna take care of us. We did the surgery when she was nine days old. We all have these called strap muscles that go up and down our neck, so I took some of that and just tried to swing it in between, and we had that partition that we've, we had to recreate, this partition here, right? So I swung it in between here to kind of thicken up, just make it sturdier, more robust, and decrease the chances of that new partition breaking down. And then also I put some cartilage in so we got the here we had to split the airway to get in from the top down and we took some cartilage from a rib and we used that to try to strengthen it because in these kids they all have what's called tracheomalacia the, because of the airway is just not put together right the cartilage is very weak and it wants to collapse so i put some cartilage in there on the outside the top part and tried to you know help stiffen it up the surgery took 11 hours to complete, and they said they had absolutely no issues whatsoever, but they did warn us at that time. They were just like, yeah, we got this completed, but we do have a long road ahead of us. While Summer recovered from her surgery, she was put in a medically induced coma to prevent her from moving and tearing her delicate esophagus and trachea as they healed. She was connected to a ventilator and was also put on a machine called ECMO, which put oxygen in her blood. Once she came off the ventilator, a tracheotomy, a small opening in her throat, was necessary to help keep her airway open. I was not able to hold her during the entire time. I was able to go up to her, kiss her, touch her, and everything like that, but I wasn't able to hold her. It was a challenging time for the Johnson family, but five months after Summer's birth, they were able to take their precious baby home. Um, well, we gotta have a face shot here. <laughs> Anybody pull the blanket back? There, there you go. go. Oh, you're home, lady. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly two years later, Summer is a happy, healthy, active little girl. She still has her trach tube to help keep her airway open and will probably have it for a few more months. 
but she doesn't let it slow her down. <laughs> it's been leaps and bounds. She's walking, talking, eating, dancing, singing, and we're just going to keep moving forward. I just feel extremely blessed to be the mother of this child because she's destined for great things. I feel so blessed that you are here. I think her future is bright. She's got a wonderful family supporting her. She's developing. She's got a wonderful personality. I think she's going to grow up to be a productive citizen and have a normal life. Our experience with the doctors and staff at Children's has been great. I believe that they hire and they attract people who care, people who want to make a difference, people that have a passion, and people that have a love to care for children. <laughs>